renal artery stenosis. So what exactly are renal arteries? Well, going out to each of the kidneys is an artery that branches off the aorta. So these two are the renal arteries and this is the aorta. Now when you talk about renal artery stenosis, there is two types of things I really need to discuss. The first of course is stenosis and the second is occlusion. Stenosis is referring to anything that causes a decrease in the blood flow to the kidney. Now occlusion is describing something that causes a complete blockage of blood flow to the kidney. So those are the two things I'll discuss. Now let's talk about the cause. What is the reason each of these would happen? Well first let's talk about occlusion. Occlusion of the renal artery can happen either because of a thrombus, which is a blood clot that can arise in uh, the renal artery itself. And another reason you can have occlusion is because of an emboli. An emboli essentially is a blood clot that moves from its origin, which is oftentimes the heart, and then later goes to the renal artery and causes this complete blockage. The next type of uh, renal artery pathology is stenosis. So why does stenosis happen? Well, 90% of the time stenosis happens because of atherosclerosis, right? The fatty plaques that develop in the renal arteries. So I'll just draw one really quick and I'll represent the plaques as yellow. So you have all these plaques that build up and eventually they cause all the stenosis um, of the renal artery. Now, when you think of atherosclerosis on clinical vignettes, think of older patients. So we're talking about patients that are 60 years or greater. It's a clue to differentiate them from the other 10% of the patients with stenosis. They get stenosis because of something called fibromuscular dysplasia. And this is a commonly tested item, even though it's only 10%. And I'll draw that one up here. So what's fibromuscular dysplasia? Well, if I use the color brown to represent the wall of the artery, fibromuscular dysplasia essentially is thickening of that wall and as a result you'll get something like this. So it's the thickening of the wall that's causing the stenosis. On clinical vignettes, pay close attention to the age of the patient. People in their 20s, young people get this, and also female greater than male, two to one. Now let's talk about the symptoms. Somebody has renal artery pathology, what kind of symptoms are they going to have? Well, of course, we have to split it up again into occlusion and stenosis. Occlusion is an acute event, meaning it happens pretty abruptly. Stenosis is a chronic event that happens you know, over long term. If someone has an occlusion, they will present as follows. They will have an aching pain in their flank area, which is, of course, where the kidney lies. Sometimes they describe it as back pain. Patient may also have abdominal pain, fever, nausea or vomiting, and hematuria, blood in the urine, and sometimes oliguria or anuria, which is basically low urine output or absolutely no urine output. Stenosis presents a little bit differently. Stenosis presents with hypertension, completely different presentation. I say, why is there hypertension? Well, the reason is as follows. Let's say you have a kidney, and here's the renal artery, and there's some stenosis for whatever reason, either plaques or uh, fibromuscular dysplasia. Well, what happens is, in a state of stenosis, less blood flows to the kidney. What that uh, results in is that the kidney actually thinks that there is a state of hypotension because less blood is coming the kidney thinks that there's not enough 
pressure in the blood or not enough volume in the blood. So the kidney responds by reabsorbing water and sodium back into the bloodstream. Well, what that does when you bring water and sodium back into the bloodstream, it raises the blood pressure. So that's why stenosis causes hypertension. Another very important thing to remember with stenosis is that on a physical exam, you can detect an abdominal bruit, which is a sound you can oscillate with your stethoscope. Now let's get into the diagnosis. Well, the first thing, very simple, is just to assess the uh, kidney function, BUN creatinine. But if you have clinical suspicion, then you will need to do some very specific testing. Now, what do I mean by clinical suspicion? I mean, if you have a patient who is young, perhaps they're less than 30 years of age, they have hypertension, and it's not responding to you know, medications, standard medications, then you think, well, that's strange. There's something suspicious about that. Let me explore a secondary cause of this patient's hypertension. And that is what I mean by clinical suspicion. Something just doesn't seem right. Well, the best thing to do is an imaging study of the kidneys. And the imaging study that's the, I guess, the most cost effective is an ultrasound of the renal arteries. That will give you the answer if the patient indeed does have renal artery stenosis, either due to uh, occlusion or some other pathology such as atherosclerosis or fibromuscular dysplasia. Treatment? Well, again, if it's a thromboembolic problem, you have to anticoagulate the patient. And that is done with IV heparin. And in addition to that, you have to surgically go in and break up that clot in a procedure known as surgical embolectomy. Now, if there's a stenosis, that's treated differently. You actually have to, just like how you would do with a patient's heart, you actually have to go in and place a stent and open up that stenotic area. And one thing I really want to mention, this shows up on licensing exam, is that in stenosis, please avoid giving ACE inhibitors. Because ACE inhibitors in a patient with renal artery stenosis can make their renal artery uh, stenosis uh, worse. It can worsen the situation. So that's contraindicated. A few vignettes now. 67-year-old man has been successfully medicated for hypertension for the past 15 years. He develops diastolic blood pressure of 110. At that time, he was taking hydrochlorothiazide, acebutalol, clonidine, doxazosin for his blood pressure and metformin for diabetes. Serum panel was unremarkable, except that his creatinine was 4 and a BUN was 28. In an attempt to lower his blood pressure, the physician added enalapril the patient rapidly developed renal failure. Which of the following choices represents the most likely diagnosis? Okay, well, this is a situation where patient has, as you can see, worsening kidney function, and he's got a lot of blood pressure meds on his schedule already, but his diastolic BP is still pretty high. So he most likely has a secondary cause to his uh, hypertension. So you're going to probably think that it's something to do with the kidney because of his BUN creatinine being high. So let's say he had renal artery stenosis. Then what the doctor did is give an ACE inhibitor. That's what enalapril is. And what that does is it worsens the situation. So which one of these is right? Let's go through these. Renal artery stenosis due to fibromuscular dysplasia. He's not really that young you know, 67, so I would move away from that choice. I'd probably think uh, of a more of a chronic uh, situation, such as atherosclerosis being the reason he has stenosis. So probably not a, 
acute renal artery occlusion. Remember, if you think back to the symptomatology of occlusion, occlusion d uh, presents differently. Patient presents with flank pain and uh, other symptoms that he doesn't seem to have. Again, another type of occlusion for choice C, same thing, that presents with dif different symptomatology. Malignant hypertension, if that was the case, he would have different symptoms as well, such as uh, blurred vision and uh, vision problems, headache, things like that. So by default, we're at, at choice E, and that is indeed the right answer. Renal artery stenosis, stenosis due to atherosclerosis or arteriosclerotic disease. Next question. 21-year-old man comes to the clinic for a follow-up visit. He has been found to have hypertensive uh, blood pressures in the 140 to 160 range. Patient has no past medical history and no complaints. A Rio system is significant for occasional band-like headaches. Physical exam is normal and normal retinal exam. UA is normal. Electrocardiogram demonstrates normal sinus rhythm with a rate of 75. Mild left ventricular hypertrophy. Blood pressure is now 150 over 110, or 100 rather. After treatment with the maximal doses of atenolol, hydrochlorothiazide, and captopril. Next step in the evaluation of this patient's hypertension is, well, here's a very young patient, and he's got blood pressure issues, even though he's on maximum doses of some of the most common meds. So you're definitely going to think of a secondary cause. And the best thing to do if you are looking for a secondary cause, and in particular a secondary cause that is related to the kidney, you would do an ultrasound of the kidney. So all these other choices actually don't help at all. Ordering an echo is not going to help figure out why his blood pressure is high. Giving him another medication is not a good choice. Repeating the EKG and repeating the eye exam are not going to give you any value with regard to the etiology of his high blood pressure. And finally, 29-year-old woman has become hypertensive and blood pressure levels are difficult to control. You have around 10 milligrams lisinopril, hydrochlorothiazide, tramterine, and verapamil. Blood pressure levels are 160 over 105, despite the foregoing. Serum potassium was normal. 24-hour urine studies for VMA, metanephrine, and free catecholamines were within normal limits. Which of the following may be helpful in further elucidating the diagnosis? Okay, again young patient, hypertension, uh, really taking a lot of meds, uh, unresponsive, you know, to standard treatment. I would, again, think of a secondary cause. And if you're looking for a secondary cause related to the kidney, before you order, order any tests, you can simply just oscillate with your stethoscope and you will hear an abdominal, or a better way to describe it, is a flank brewery. And that will be done on an abdominal exam. So, like these questions, the best thing to do initially is something that's the cheapest. And listening to the uh, patient with your stethoscope is definitely cost-effective because it doesn't cost anything.